Get the f*** out of here! <laughs> Go home! We don't want you here. We don't like your kind here. We only like people in blue cars around here. One more. Don't honk at me. <laughs> Don't honk at me, asshole. <laughs> the gate is open. Time to go through. Are you ready for what's on the other side? No. Nope. <laughs> God dang it. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's, let's just put it out there. I think these fan contest competition things like this, you know... X Factor, America's Got Talent, American Idol, The Voice, stuff like that. I think, in a lot of ways, it's entertaining. You know, whenever someone completely surprises everyone. I know the, the one that a lot of people talk about is, uh, you know, the Susan Boyle, you know, she made all that money, but she still lives very mildly she doesn't be extravagant and all that mm -hmm. and then of course there's also uh you know a bunch of other you know, it you know kelly clarkson ruben stuttered and all the you know chris daughtry even though he didn't win he like he got famous enough from that to where he could have a successful music career and i think in some ways it does benefit uh you know some people's careers heck i knew someone huh I'm sorry, what? One Direction. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I don't I don't acknowledge that they friggin' exist. What? I, do, I don't care about One Direction. I don't. I mean... I... Mm. <laughs> the fact that I had little sisters that just wouldn't stop playing their damn songs all the time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I had to learn about all... I had to learn all about them. I had to learn about the crushes. Oh, oh, one of my little sisters loved Harry. She was all about Harry. The other one loved Liam. She was always about, she was all about Liam. And I had to hear day and night about how, how amazingly, like, amazingly talented they were and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, my point is, I, I, think, <laughs> I think some good has come from these shows. I think so. On the other side of it, I can see the exploitative nature of these shows whenever there's a contestant that just rubs people the, like, that some people, it, they find it funny initially when the person is made fun of. I know the most, probably, like, before, in the olden days, back when American Idol first started up, William Hung was the one everybody liked to make fun of. You know, the guy, she bang, she bang, oh baby, she move, she move. Like, horrible singer and this and that, but he actually got bullied so hard because of that, he he tried self-termination. And, but here's the thing, he did that knowing full well that he would get a groundswell of support and then came back and try and, you know, like someone paid for him to make an album. Hmm. And it's just... Mm. And then, of course, you know, you have uh, instances where Katy Perry... There was this kid who came on there. I think he was like 18. He just turned 18. And he'd never kissed a girl before. He was saving himself for marriage. And Katy Perry, like, like just manipulated him to come up to, like, the desk in front of her. And she's like, she's like, can you give me a kiss on the cheek real quick? Just, just real quick kiss on the cheek. And he loved Katy Perry. He, he loved Katy Perry's music. And he walked up, and he like, was about to kiss her on the cheek. Then she turns her head real quick, and she kisses him on the lips. Hmm. Thus stealing his first kiss. And I'm like... Imagine Simon Cowell or Randy Jackson pulling that shit. Or Steven Tyler pulling that shit. On a girl. On a girl, yeah. yeah. On a just-turned-18 girl. Instantly cancer. Instantly. But no, Katy Perry got to keep her career, and, well, her career's only gone downhill since then. That seems to be a trajectory for, like, most artists. Uh, it's like, you know, they have their peaks, and then they have their middling period after their peak, and then afterwards they, they fall into, they fall into, like, events where they're just like, oh, I, I'm a judge on a 
music related show and then that's that's their last thing they do before they eventually leave the limelight when Zoe Alexander received four no's from the X Factor judges, her entire life fell apart over a 10 year period, and the whole thing was documented on camera from a hundred different angles. It all began with this email right here, in which Zoe first reached out to the X Factor requesting to appear on the show, explaining that she was a 22 year old pink and impersonator but wanted to audition as herself. After being accepted as a contestant, Zoe was asked to send through five songs she wanted to sing, yet the X Factor then specifically demanded that Zoe audition as Pink. They wanted me to sing a Pink song. He basically said that if I didn't, I wouldn't be going on the show. So I agreed. After to Wait, for real? Song. He basically said that if I didn't, I wouldn't be going on the hmm. The Pink songs that define you as a singer, your five song choices are your decision. Hmm. Sure. So I agreed. After agreeing to do so, Zoe was invited in for an interview where they continued to ask her about Pink. All he wanted to talk about was Pink. Have you seen Pink live? Do you know Pink's real name? Do you think you're like Pink in real life? With Zoe adding that they had no interest. So they tried to make her look hysterical. She's a Pink impersonator. That doesn't mean she's like, like all about Pink all about all the time. She's just she just kind of looks like Pink, and I guess can sing sort of like Pink. Mm -hmm. Whenever somebody looks that close to someone, like the producers and stuff, are gonna see dollar signs. Oh yeah, because they're gonna see they're controversy. Gonna know that the dollar signs are in the impersonation, like impersonation uh, aspect of it, not anything that they'll do on their own. Yeah. yeah. The impersonation is much more valuable. So it's much more rare. And that's and this, this would be my thing. I I literally would just be like, why do you want me to? I, I told you I wanted to audition as me. Zoe Alexander, not Pink. Why Why are you forcing me to audition as Pink when I told you I want to audition as myself because I've done the Pink thing and I, I'm okay with it, but, but it's not what I want to do with my life. Showing that the X Factor had an ulterior motive to create a story out of her being pink. Before heading out on stage, one of the X Factor producers then encouraged Zoe to give an overly emotional performance. And he said, make sure you use all of the stage. If the judges say no, beg them, cry, get down on your knees and beg. So when she'd appear in front of the judges just a few minutes later, this is what went down. Um, I'm gonna sing So What by Pink. Pink, okay. Off you go. After stating that she was gonna sing So What by Pink, Zoe gave a boisterous emotional performance using the whole stage with excessive facial expressions. However, the focus on her physical delivery and a few other things which we'll talk about later meant the singing was fairly average, leading the judges to stop her mid-song before stating this. I honestly think that you need to go away and take the time to find yourself as an artist. Despite this, the judges were kind enough to give her a second chance. Should we get a second song? Yeah. Yeah. I want to give you a chance. Yet she was then stopped midway through her second song before the judges once again implied that they didn't think she was good enough. Because at the moment it just sounds like every other average sort of singing voice. But as the judges explained that she wouldn't be going to the next round, Zoe turned the criticism back onto them. You told me to sing a pink song. I didn't want to sing a pink song. Never, you guys told me never to, sing, told a pink you to sing a pink song. Zoe then proceeded to lose her temper before bringing her dad onto the stage, swearing at the judges and throwing the microphone toward them. After some more chaos then went down backstage, Zoe lashed out at the cameraman ending the segment. However, in terms of negative feedback, this was really only the start. It depends on how you frame everything. And with none of the prior knowledge out about them demanding that she sing pink songs, there's really like the, there's, there's no, no proof or evidence. Yeah, until she releases like the emails and stuff like that, in which then the X Factor can claim negligence, be like, well, she made she made those up. You know, she showed that. The only thing that she could do is show the email that it's sent from. You know, like the official X Factor email, but you risk doxing X Factor at that point, and thus that's legal grounds to potentially be sued. So it's mm -hmm. yeah.
event. The family was so distraught from the event that they drove home in silence, yet Zoe seemed convinced that they wouldn't include her performance in the final cut of the show. Where Incorrect. I still didn't believe that they would show my audition on TV. I mean, how could they show the systematic bullying leading to a breakdown of a woman? It would be too upsetting. Until about an hour after arriving home, when a Daily Mail reporter who was at the audition called the family to get a statement for an article and to tell Zoe that she was definitely going to appear on television. They will edit it in any way they can to show it on TV because it is TV gold. With this information, Zoe's mental health began to decline rapidly. I couldn't sleep. I, I just stayed up every night. I can't stress to you enough what an emotional wreck I was. I didn't trust anyone and I just kept breaking down, crying. Made even worse by the countless articles talking about the situation before the episode had even gone live. Then, after six weeks of fear, Zoe's phone began to ring. I got a phone call from the X Factor informing me that they were going to air my audition. I was honestly so terrified. I just said no and put the phone down. Within hours of the episode going live, the performance was being called the most shocking audition ever, while other publications such as The Mirror called her X Factor's most shocking contestant ever. As a result of this, Zoe stated, I was recognized everywhere I went. So here's my thing with, with you know, once the media machine really starts getting, and, and here's the thing, they're gonna take the side of <clears throat> the most popular narrative, and the most popular narrative is she's a psychotic Pink fan who was upset that, you know, she couldn't be as famous as Pink. Yeah, because it gains traction for not only X Factor. But also it takes advantage of the narrative of like, you know, psychotic fans who think that they are the person that they're like they're singing at it's like mm -hmm. and look i will lend credence and you know give some rope and say that yes there are crazy fans out there who are like that but to take advantage of a young woman like this in this way is both ass backwards and insulting to like all like like to all of the legitimate cases of that out there like you you should be ashamed of yourselves for even thinking, for even like framing it that way. Because I, uh, mm. Laughed at, mind. pointed at, threatened. Both myself and my dad have been threatened with violence to the point that my dad had to physically defend us. I'd go to the gym and people would watch the video on their phones in front of me and then whisper and laugh. Despite this, Judge Tulsi Constastavlos refused to change her attitude on the situation, stating there is always going to be the odd person who throws a massive hissy fit. Thousands of people over the years have auditioned and this one person couldn't control their temper and threw a fit. But I don't think that's a reason for everyone to go, you've got to think about their emotions. That was one person. Those are her issues and she chose to bring those issues to the stage. Given she now had no other option, Zoe began to defend herself by stating that the show deliberately tried to make me out to be this girl with a bad attitude before she theorized that the X Factor deliberately encouraging her to sing a Pink song was part of a plan to increase ratings through televising a poor performance, which would explain why the producers encouraged her to be emotional in the minutes before the audition. Zoe Alexander was set up for a fall and yes, she couldn't sing but that isn't the issue under discussion. Setting people up to mockery by deliberately enhancing their self-image beyond their talents is cruelty bordering on human rights infringement. Zoe's volatile nature would have been spotted in one of the earlier auditions and then stoked up so she would outburst on TV and thereby encourage a flagging audience to tune in with the expectation of future Jerry Springer moments. Shameful, just shameful, yet others were a little less compassionate. Look, she may have been set up by producers which isn't fair but at the end of the day she can't sing. The judges were just being polite by using the identity thing as an excuse because she did get to sing a second song, which she was also rubbish at. Her violent slash physical outburst was wrong full stop. Yes, it's unfair for producers to mislead her, but her reaction was atrocious and very bratty. Also, her dad shouldn't have brought her back onto the stage either, as this escalated the whole situation. She got to sing two songs, whereas most people get to sing one, and she wasn't good enough and of. Yet Zoe didn't stop pushing. See, I kind of, for the most part, that's sort of what I've been thinking, is it's like, yeah, what the show did was shitty. Obviously, those shows are fucking predatory as hell, you know? Yes. But I can't really argue against the point of that particular comment right there. Well, no, I can argue, well... It, it's, it's really like a situation where you have to realize those shows are trying to predate on you and losing your temper when you clearly have cameras rolling at you. 
It's kind of like the whole, like, Always Sunny episode where at the end Dennis, like, loses his shit on the game show. And then he's like, just don't air it. This doesn't represent me, though. This doesn't represent... Just don't air it. And he's like, oh, we're going to air it. We always air it. Well, yeah. well that's... It's like, yeah, well, that's how it works. Like, if you're going to show your ass on national television, yeah, it's kind of on you to no matter I, what happens. And once you. again, I don't think that she's not 100%, like, out of the blame circle. But I do think that everything that they did to set her up for that is the is where more like fault lies and i think that it just speaks to the predatory nature that these shows have that i think needs to change or at least be addressed because look i am never like i don't do this to be to be advantageous i don't do this to make people feel bad about themselves i don't seek out drama I don't do that because it's never been what I am about. And I think people who deliberately seek drama instead of just, you know, chilling out and enjoying life a little bit and instead and life's too short to be pissed off all the time, man. That's all I got to say and just, you know, it it when people deliberately, you know, be they are deliberately what sort I'm looking for? Inflammatory. When they be deliberately inflammatory just to drum up drama, I don't know what else to say except for just like get a life and I'm not going to I'm not going to reciprocate. Talk all the shit you want. I just don't give a shit back against what had happened. Approximately seven months after the audition went live, an article was published by BBC News titled X Factor Cleared Over Pink Tribute Act Complaints, in which it was explained that Zoe had gone to the government broadcasting agency Ofcom, claiming that the X Factor had ignored her track choices, changed her song list and dictated her outfit and hairstyle, insisting on her appearing in her pink persona. Yet the agency found that the judge's comments were balanced, and her violent reaction after the audition was unacceptable by any standards. Whatever her perceived grievance. Accordingly, Ofcom has not upheld Miss Alexander's complaint, with articles such as this one perpetuating Zoe's nightmare. People said to me, oh, don't worry, it'll blow over, it won't last forever, and it lasted for years and years and years. Things became even worse when Zoe's performance racked up almost 100 million views in compilations such as these two. However, with comments such as, I don't trust any of these after hearing Zoe Alexander's story, it seemed there was more that was yet to be discussed. On the 20th of July 2020, Zoe uploaded her own video titled Zoe Alexander X Factor The Truth, in which she now revealed that the performance itself had been edited and even CGI'd to make the X Factor look good and Zoe look bad. She stated the judges actually began the audition by essentially insulting her. And he moved on to tell me that I was very overconfident, which wasn't shown on TV. And after she started singing, the audience went crazy by cheering. However, in the final cut of the show, this had been reversed, so the audience was instead cheering while the judges gave their opinions. In the broadcast footage, the audience reaction has been completely changed. The audience could be heard clapping and cheering her words as if she was voicing the opinion of the entire audience. In fact, the audience at that moment sat in silence. As a person who was in the audience, we were told to keep quiet when the judges say anything. So yeah, you're definitely telling the truth. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Mm. Is like WWE did that all the time. Like there there was a guy that they tried to make the the like the big like good guy on TV, Roman Reigns. They tried to make him the main good guy on TV for like four years. It was like from 2013 till about 2017, 2018. That all they did was push him and push him and push him. And then lo and behold, people are like, no, we don't like this guy. Why do you keep forcing him out there? And you could hear the boos on live TV being muted. Whenever like people shared live stuff from the live events that they showed, the boos were deafening whenever Roman came out. But yet, whenever they showed the whenever they showed the live or the live broadcast on their uh, network, all of the boos were muted, and instead cheers were put over top of it to make Roman look like, oh, people are cheering for him, and this and that, and blah blah blah. Uh, yeah. So these companies do this all the time. They don't let. Uh, what? Why else do you think the prompt, like the little prompters up there for the audience, like applause, boos? Cheers. Yeah, it... Either way, yeah. This... This stuff is just... Mmm.
Zoe went on to explain that the music they played was also different to what she'd sent through. The track that they played was not the track that I had sent them. It was in a different key and it was a different track. And when she'd thrown the microphone, she'd done so because they'd turned it off while she was explaining what had happened. Then I realised that they'd turned the microphone off and that was when I threw it to the floor. But somehow in, in the video, I threw it like that. I didn't. I, I threw it to the floor. Zoe then debunked the segment where she'd seemingly walked off and come back with her dad. I categorically did not leave the stage and subsequently return hand in hand with my father. Once again, the footage has been completely fabricated. Another example of the X Factor's over imaginative editing. Before she added that even the judge's comments had been inserted at a later date. Also, Nicole did not stand up and say, no, baby, no, that did not happen. So they were cut in afterwards to produce the footage in their fictitious storyline. After heading backstage, another scene was filmed in which Zoe begged the cameraman to stop filming. However, this also didn't make the cut. I, I was saying, please, please stop filming me, please stop filming me. This scene was cut from the broadcast footage and replaced with even more fabricated footage, which better suited their storyline, as it didn't portray me as aggressive. The real footage would have clearly demonstrated the broken and emotional state into which I had been bullied. And with this information, everybody began to stand up for her. I admit I was one of the many who laughed and thought you were this crazy lady who was just mad that you lost the audition. I'm so sorry they're so horrible for doing you like this, with others informing Zoe that her video had blown up outside of YouTube. Over on TikTok, a relatively small account made a 15 minute million view video talking about what had happened, which when duetted by Zoe, gained a further 27 million views with almost everybody sticking up for Zoe. As a result, Nicole Scherzinger's comment section began to fill with comments regarding Zoe's treatment and therefore the judge did this. Can we just talk about the fact that Nicole Scherzinger has blocked me on TikTok? Despite this, the mainstream media ran with the story, causing the X Factor to backpedal rapidly. You have made the X Factor turn off their Instagram comments. You have made The X Factor turn off their YouTube comments and you have made The X Factor change the title and description of my X Factor audition video. With a 19 million view audition video having since been removed altogether. On top Ouch. of this, Zoe's appearance as- Damn. <laughs> That's- <laughs> I Power get... of the Power comment. To the Power to the people, I guess. Army. <laughs> yeah. Army. I don't know. Well, what is it I mean, called? I mm, power of the by the power of the internet. Sorry. Yeah, but something like that. But yeah, yeah mob. Yeah, comment mob. I guess you could call them. Yeah, that's a bit. Yeah. Eh. Comment. Yeah, but the whole deal with her, with with when she pointed all this out, when she pointed out all the stuff, I guarantee you. The X Factor realized this is gross misrepresentation of this person, and anyone and everyone can see this now. And in a court of public opinion, we're losing. So we need to just like full damage control and get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, their PR team is flipping cartwheels trying to. <laughs> and also, I can just see the like the. The head producers just be like, we're the X Factor. We're supposed to be able to get away with this shit. I can't believe that you know the, the, this person's like actually making sense and like making a good argument against us. It's like, yeah, that tends to happen whenever you horribly misrepresent people. I mean, I feel bad for the girl though. I do too. Uh, taken out of the mega viral top five angriest contestants video which when considering zoe's poor attitude and the show's sketchy editing feels like a reasonable middle ground between the two parties well there you go oh damn that was weird not sure what the hell that was that was loud well there you go uh, the x factor destroyed a contestant's entire life once again I'm never ever going to go on one of those shows. You could not pay me enough to go on one of those shows. I mean, if I did, like, I'm not going to take any of their fucking bait. Well, also, like, you if know... they start trying to piss me off by filming, like, after it's clear things have, like, not worked out and stuff, like, I'm just going to let them film me. Just be like, hey, you guys have a good evening. Well, also, so, well... Yeah. It's like, you just got to kind of not give them anything to work with you know but then you know they're just gonna not use your footage which is that's, preferable that's to... preferable to what happened to her for sure yeah. yeah for sure so 
better to not be. <laughs> yeah, better to just have yourself cut entirely than end up like with a situation where everybody thinks that you're the jerk when you were, weren't actually the jerk, you know? You were being bullied. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly how quickly things change like that, and now it's just. And it took a long time for her to be able to tell her story and make, you know, and make good on. This is why if I ever do that kind of, if you know, someone ever did talk me into doing that, you know what I would do the one hundred percent of the time. I would have someone backstage, and I would literally have them, either with a phone, record the whole thing. Record everything so that no misrep. Because that's actually something. Nowadays, you might actually have to sign a thing to where you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. That, that, yeah. So but it's... and that's what I would say is like, okay, don't mind me. I'm just gonna wear these glasses uh, while I perform, and it's gonna be one of those glasses that has the little camera lens hidden in it, and that way it's just like, yeah, fuck you. You're not gonna. Hold. If they make you sign an NDA, though, you still could probably get sued for releasing that footage if you had to. In the oh, but that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like, I didn't release the footage. I'm not sure what happened. It was leaked. Well, that's that's what happened. Like, Reese, Wer uh, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick were under a uh, NDA whenever the uh, Deadpool footage got leaked. Back. You remember that footage, right? That got leaked? Uh, the Deadpool, like, animated thing that got leaked? that led to the film be actually being made because of the positive response. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. It, they were under an NDA, and they were under, like, they were about to get their pants suit off, but then, all of a sudden, the studio was like, holy shit, people actually do want to see this. Why didn't we release this? It's like, well, we didn't think people would like it. It's just like, you're fired. Wernick, Reese, get in here. And then they basically, like, gave them free reign to write whatever they wanted for the Deadpool movie because the balls. <laughs> and plus, according to certain sources, Ryan Reynolds had their back just in case things went south for them. So, yeah. But stuff like this just ugh, puts a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to comes to shows like this. Yeah. I, don't, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it except for I'm glad they're not as popular as they used to be. I'm glad that, you know, they're like people have kind of grown out of them. Yeah. They still have their audience, but, eh, well. Either you way. You can only do that so much until it's kind of repetitive, like, to an extent. Yeah. It's like, essentially, you know what they're trying to look for and what kind of content they're trying to air, and it's mostly that drama kind <coughs> If they were actually trying to air people doing unique, talented things, then they'd be a lot more interesting to watch, but you can tell that's not what they're trying to do, you know? Yeah, they're trying to be exploitative, you know, just like how they've always been. Oh, well. Any way to get some views. Uh-huh. Anyway, I think that's going to do it. This was How the X Factor Destroyed a Contestant's Entire Life uh, by Sunny V2. If you want to see more from Sunny V2, feel free to click his name in the title of the video. <coughs> and until next time, <coughs> signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I'm Nick. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>